Hi there Booktube, it's Roz and this is my rankings of the six books that were in the Booktube Prize Fiction Final Group and I'm recording this early in September but by, by the time you see this the results will be out and I am all agog to know which of these six books gets bronze, silver or gold. I would describe all of these as very decent books. You know, we're at the final now. There's no there's no rubbish in here, okay? But for me, they fell very much into two halves, you know. Uh, there was three books that I could happily put in the sort of, in, my, in the bottom half of my rankings, and three that I had to agonise over in terms of which would get first, second, third place in my personal ratings. But we'll see if the results match mine or are wildly different. So, Down at Number Six is, as I say, not at all a bad book. Far from it. And that's The Rachel Instant by Caroline O'Donoghue. Now, this was deservedly a, a bestseller. Um, it's an enormously enjoyable book. Um, it's written with a really strong Irish voice. And that's, you know, not Dublin, not the sort of romantic well, west of coast or, or whatever. It's Cork. Cork, a kind of provincial port city in the south of south of, of, of Ireland. And um, that is where I think Caroline O'Donoghue is from. And there's sort of, you know, she, I think she drew on her own life um, in writing this book. It's not her first novel. Uh, I think most of her previous work has been YA. This is a coming of age story. It's about Rachel, who's a rather kind of chaotic student, um, dealing with the fact that her parents are less well off than they were because we're in 2008 or 2009, you know, when the Irish economy kind of went into free fall rather. Um, and uh, she has to work in a bookshop to pay her pay you know pay her way as a student and she meets there um James who becomes her 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 gay best friend and housemate it's it's a very funny book um almost farcical at times it's a book about friendship which is lovely um it's also, though, about what it was like being a young woman in Ireland in the sort of, uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago, because it's a time when, you know, society has changed, people, um, uh, you know, have freed up a great deal, the sort of weight of the control of the church has shifted, and yet, and yet, still, um, uh, you know, things like abortion, things like being queer uh, were often you know brushed under the carpet needed to kept hidden you know people would be in the closet or, or keeping secrets um and that made them vulnerable so uh, and th that that kind of uh, tension i suppose is what elevated the book for me from being just a sort of a, a funny coming of age story and maybe you know a little bit kind of thickly or, or sugary sweet and you know it's it, it's there's a there's a there's a thread of um shame and bitterness in the story that kind of balances out the the humor and the um and the, and the warmth so lovely book why is it number six because you know it's great i liked it i enjoyed it but it's not very memorable you know i have a feeling that in a year's time if you say to me oh did you read the rachel incident it'll be like Yes, I did. What was that one about? Number five is a book that I almost liked less, but yet is more, yeah, more memorable, I think. And that's another Irish book, as it happens, The Beasting by Paul Murray. Now, this book was a bit of a critical triumph. Um, again, funnily enough, it's set in around, you know, 2008, 2009, when... Irish economy was going pear shaped. So are the sort of it's it's the story of Dickie and his family. And Dickie is a car dealer, um, well off and but 
you know, he's going bust and um, he's also experiencing blackmail. So, you know, everything's going even more pear-shaped for him than it is for the Irish economy as a whole. And he has to try and, he's trying to keep this a secret, you know, secrets, ongoing theme. Now, despite the fact that, you know, everyone and his uncle seems to have loved the bee sting, overall, I didn't altogether find it satisfactory. But I could see the ambition and I could see the quality uh, and, and, you know, in parts, it's exceptionally good. It's just I found it overly long and, you know, at times it just went off the boil for me or, 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 or became irritating. I, it, one of the strengths of it, I suppose, is that we get the different voices. You know, we have Dickie himself you know, the car dealer going bust and with secrets and obsessions um, as his world falls apart. We've got Imelda, his wife, on the surface, very glamorous and sort of sociable underneath, trying to deal with her really very difficult um, childhood and and the sort of trauma that that's left her with. Um, We've got Cassie, their student daughter, who's trying to make her own life, you know, away at university and not get caught up in in those sort of family dynamics. And their 12-year-old son, PJ, who's been bullied at school and is worried about his parents' marriage. And, you know, we hear from, from, from all four of them. And that, you know, that does work. But what why why it's it's why does it irritate me at times? It because there's this kind of repeated pattern in the book of coincidence and, you know, uh, a kind of a level of, of failure in mutual communication in this family that I just couldn't quite believe. And uh, there's also this kind of repeated, repeated thing of building the tension and then the thing that you're worried about sort of doesn't quite happen or things don't quite turn out like that. I, I felt a bit manipulated by that. On the other hand, you know, it, it's a brilliant picture of a dysfunctional family and uh, a, a really sort of tricky time in for for Ireland and, you know, in the economy. And, you know, so l- lots to like in it. It, it just wasn't... It's, it's a book that I could, um, you know, I could see why others would love it, but it wasn't a success altogether for me. Book number four is another book that, if it had been a little bit shorter and tighter, might have been higher up the rankings for me. Yeah. You know, really big, sprawly novels have to be incredibly effective to, 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 you know, satisfy me, I suppose. You know, I I, I tend towards the shorter book and, um, you know, yeah, they've got to really earn the earn the time that I spend on them. So, number four, Wellness by Nathan Hill, American author this time. Um, after two Irish ones, it's, uh, what's it about? It's about a pair of millennials who one one's an artist, one's a scientist. They they meet as like younglings in um, Chicago in 1993, and become a couple and the book kind of moves back and forth between that time and a kind of present day that's somewhere around 2014 so you know fairly contemporary and in a sense it's a story of their their marriage their relationship over um that time it's so much so much more than that though and and nathan hill almost almost packs in too many you know, ideas and themes into the book. Um, but some of them are really interesting. And and he he pulls off the sort of non-linear structure of the book really, really effectively, really confidently. So that's what kind of carried me along. So what are these multiple themes and and and, and ideas that I'm talking about? Well, one is is wellness and the placebo effect, um, and um which is a key part of of, of um one of the Um, one of the couple's sort of working life. It's a book about marriage and the stories that we we 
tell about our relationships and how we almost invent our own narrative and it it it, it becomes reality but is it um so you know it's about yes sort of truth and stories and out and out lies and how you know those things interact in our lives it's it's also about internet conspiracy theories and um uh oh what else architecture um uh, uh the power of, of 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 sort of whatsapp groups and you know local politics and nimbyism and and um uh fitness obsessions with fitness I mean, it, it, it packs it all in almost in a ridiculous amount i didn't exactly kind of love all of it as a book but you know and sometimes the sprawl did sort of slump a bit for me but but you know the good bits of this novel really outweighed the bad and I was really I was very glad that the Book Two Prize brought me to read it. it it's um yeah ambitious and yeah smart there you go now this is where things get complicated and hard because the other three books were all books that I genuinely loved and two, two are almost perfect novels by novelists, kind of, I don't know, in their, at, at the top of their game as writers, I suppose, is, is how I put it. The other is a little bit more flawed, perhaps, and yet was a book that, in many ways, I considered genius, you know, brilliant. So, how to choose? How to choose between those three? Well, at number three, in third place for me, is one of the perfect novels. <laughs> um, and that's Tom Lake by Anne Patchett. Now, Anne Patchett, US author. Um, she's written how many? And this is her ninth novel. And I've read, it's the fourth one that I've read. And all four have been first rate books, in, in my opinion. Um, this one is uh it's a, it's a covid lockdown novel but it's not about the pandemic it's more that she uses the fact that that we had that experience of lockdown to create a a, a situation for a family um for a couple and their their three adult daughters who were who are all kind of like forced back home in this little bubble with their parents um and um on the fruit farm where they grew up and uh, they're, they're, they're taking part in the cherry harvest because the the pickers that would normally come can't because of COVID. So so, and 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 because they're in this sort of slightly intense sort of family bubble, they they talk and the the topic comes up of the mother Lara's um, youthful relationship with a with a fellow actor because you know she was an actor before she became a farmer and this fellow actor kind of goes on to become a sort of real high profile movie star oscar winner you know that kind of figure and the girls uh, kind of become curious and want to know more and this is their opportunity to pin their mother down and find out more about that and, and, and her relationship and what happened and, and so on. And that's the story that we get. So we go back and forth between the present day, 2020, and the time in the 1990s, or is it 1990s? No, 1980s, about 1988, when she was in a play, you know, in this place called Tom Lake, in also in Michigan, and, and you know, had this brief, intense relationship with this fellow actor. And we get the stories that she tells her daughters, but we also get the the private memories that she she kind of go through her head as she's telling them this story. So this is a book about stories, about the stories of our life, the stories that we tell ourselves, the stories we tell others, how we kind of, how our identity grows out of that, I suppose, but also how how over time our idea of of what love is of what a good life is changes you know that what makes a a a 
good relationship, what, the choices that we make and how they shape us, but also why we make them. Yeah. You can tell from, from, from how I'm talking about this book that I, I really enjoyed it. When I started it, I wasn't sure. You know, I thought it would, might be a bit, I don't know, cosy. Absolutely not. This is a real grower of a novel. And, you know, by the end of it, I was, I was, you know, really impressed, really entranced, really loved it, really felt connected with, with Lara in particular, the, um, the, the main character. And it made me think about my life and choices that I've made and my kind of definition of love and, 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 and the sort of relationships that I, I've had over my life. And yeah, what more can you ask for a novel than that it, that it does? It gets you, gets you kind of, gets you doing that. So we're down to my top two, both wonderful books, both real Ros books, you know, my sort of idea, very different, but both, you know, really well attuned to, to what I, what I enjoy and find interesting. In, in a book. How to choose between them. In the end, I decided the only way to do it was to, to put as top of the pile the one of the two that I think, when I look back on 2024, you know, which is the book that I will associate with this year that I will remember, oh, that was the year that I read this, which of them, and, and that's the one that I chose which means that the utterly wonderful, tremendous, magic novel Northwoods by Daniel Mason is at number two. Um, it's his fifth book. He writes fourth novel and then he's also published a collection of short stories. He writes quite slowly, partly because he's busy with his day job as a psychiatrist, um, American writer. I've only read one of his other books, Piano Tuna. That was brilliant too. It's why do I love it so much? The central character in this novel is not a person, it's a place. It's a it's an area of, of woods in 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 New England and and the the homestead built there that then is sort of built on and, and the different we, you know, we, we 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 follow it through time through the different people who come to live there. It starts with um, like at the time when the first European settlers were, were moving in on um, that part of America, you know, uh, uh, fighting with, displacing um, the indigenous population. So it's almost, and it takes us up to the present day, so it's almost like a, a history of New England, a history, you know, from through well, from the point of colonization going forward it's it's uh, it also it's kind of like a, a, a it's about how i don't know american or certainly new england kind of society and culture and politics and people kind of change you know so so you know we're starting with the impact of colonization but you know what about um the development of agriculture, the development of industry, you know, or what about when, when you get roads and railways and communication, you know, what, how, how, how does, how does that move it along? What happens to American English over that time? You know, we, we, in the book, he so cleverly kind of uses language in a way that shows us how, um, the language evolves and develops. Um, the structure is, uh, it's a sequence of stories, and some of those are told in quite a straightforward fashion. But in intervening, we get these uh, kind of like invented documents. Um, what do I mean? Like case files, or songs, or or um, uh, captivity narratives. Um, uh, so sort of interspersed, interspersed letters, uh, interspersed through. I thought this was a brilliant book. I thought it was so skillful the way it's written. Um, it's yeah, it, it, exceptional um, because it could have been it could have been a hot mess and it isn't. There's a there's a kind of a, a, a narrative and thematic thread 
that links the whole book together and whole, and never as a reader. It's a long, long book. This is a really long book again, but not for a moment in this book did I slump. I never felt, oh, this bit's a bit dull or, oh, he's packing too many different ideas in here. You know, on the contrary, I was always engaged. There's kind of like a, a, a sort of slightly supernatural element to the book. And sometimes that's a turn off for me. It absolutely wasn't in this case. It, you know, it really worked in, in helping add to the connections between the, the people that had lived in this, in this place. The woods themselves uh, came uh, 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 vivid to me and, and so important in the book. <sighs> yes, I, I, I could go on and on talking about it. Why, when I love it this much, um, why is it not number one? Um, you know, I, I could have flipped a coin and, 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 and put it at the top. One of the best things about the book is that as a reader you have to you have to stay stay on your game too you have to pay attention and and stay focused because there are little callbacks um you know uh, easter eggs some people will call them i suppose you know between you know the, in, in the later parts of the book that 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 take you back uh, connect to things earlier on that you could miss if you if you weren't giving the book that kind of attention so 100 percent loved it but but I had to pick Enter Ghost by Isabella Hamad as my number one book in this book two final because why? Why? Because when I when I look back on 2024, I really I, I, I absolutely think Enter Ghost is gonna be the book that 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 speaks to me of 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 the year. Hamad is a British Palestinian author. Um and the book is set in Palestine, Israel, Palestine. And inevitably, although it's set in, oh, what year? 2017, the story, you can't get away from um, current events in when, as you're reading it. And so, you know, inevitably that gives it a kind of added resonance, I, I suppose. Um, and maybe that's one of the reasons why it, it gets top spot for me. What is the book? What is the book? Sonia, the protagonist, is like her mad, is a British Palestinian. Um, she's, but she's an actress uh, rather than a writer and a little bit older. Than, than Hamad herself, and she she's her career's in a, a little bit of a hiatus, um, and she decides to go and visit her sister who lives in Haifa and works at an Israeli university, and then the relationship is a little bit uneasy, perhaps, but you know she goes to stay, and while she's there, she gets caught up in uh, an Arabic language production of Hamlet which is being put on in the West Bank. And she's gradually kind of drawn into that. And that's the, that's the sort of the shape that the, the, of, of the book, the, the, the premise, the pretext. This is a book about divisions and connections, about borders and conflicts, but also about what, what draws us together, uh, about belonging, I suppose, and identity. Um, I, I think, in a way, what Hamad is writing about is that if you are a Palestinian, of Palestinian her heritage, regardless of whether you're living as an Israeli citizen, whether you're living in Palestinian authority areas or Gaza, whether you're a refugee in, you know, Lebanon or Jordan or part of the diaspora, you know, in the States or or the UK or France or whatever, wherever you are, you 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 can't get away from um Palestinian history, your that uh, the impact of 1948 and you know, how that continues to, um, you can't ignore that in, in your life. It, it, Sonia, the protagonist, is half Dutch, half Palestinian. She grew up in London, um, visiting her grandparents in Haifa, but, you know, uh, you know, European, European upbringing. 
when she comes back to stay with her sister. She does not feel at home in 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 Haifa uh, by any means. Um, and yet, and yet, her experience of, of being part of this production of Hamlet gets her questioning her her personal history, her family's history, her 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 feelings about that, her feelings as a as a someone of Palestinian origin. And ultimately, she kind of comes to a, a, a different sense of belonging and identity, I think. And, and that's the, the, the narrative arc of the book. The fact that it's, it's a production of Hamlet throws up another whole set of, of, of resonances, doesn't it, around um, kind of political uh, uh, aggression, um, uh, you know, changes of regime, um, the kind of conflict in family families and conflict in states. Um, it's also a book about siblings. You know, her relationship with her sister really kind of illustrates the way kind of brothers and sisters uh, can can grow up together, and yet their memory and understanding of their childhood could be radically different. Um, I know that's, you know, true in my family, and that really comes through. It's it's full of detail about life in, in, in you know, in Israel, Palestine now uh, that's, uh, you know, was really fascinating to me as a reader, uh, sometimes shocking, sometimes moving, sometimes distressing. You know, what what, what is it like? to go through a checkpoint how how does the different passport you have um affect your um your experiences your rights your 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 what how does it feel as a palestinian man um to experience how does how does i don't know that experience of oppression and disempowerment um kind of affect your sense of your own masculinity um so many so many levels in this book and um uh, uh, yes, I must stop talking about it because I could go on and on and on. As I say, it's it's strangely not perfect um, always in how it's written, and yet overall, it it's such a strong, powerful, significant novel, and and I suppose ultimately it's about art and politics and how. The relationship between the two, and and you know, what is the the place of art and artists in a in a situation of of, of conflict and and war, um, and that was true in Shakespeare's day. That that, that was a, a, an essential question, and it's an essential question now. And so, yeah, that's why it was. That's why it's it's number one in, of, of, of of for me of these six wonderful novels. There we go. I shall stop there. I'm dying to find out the true result. You'll know by the time you watch this. Um, but I would love your comments about any of these that you've read and, you know, agree with me or disagree with me. I, I, I'm, that, always, that always brings me pleasure.